Welcome back to Adventures in Aviators, your do-it-yourself adventure channel. Today we are starting a brand new snorkeling series on the beautiful island of Kwajalein. Kwajalein is a U.S. Army garrison, so this is definitely not for everybody. This is not a tourist location. This is for people who have authorization to be on this island. But this is a really special one for me because this is where I fell in love with snorkeling about, gosh, 11 years ago. And that Michelle and I are back now, and we are going to help anyone who's out on this island, whether that is uh, someone there on temporary duty or new residents, to find their way around to some of the best snorkel sites so that you can understand what there is to expect. You can do these things safely and have a great time. And guys, these are some epic snorkels. So I am super excited to get this kicked off. As we always do on our channel, we are going to make our way through five different categories. That is location, water access, water traffic, wildlife, and facilities. And we're going to be ranking that on our scale of one to five manta rays. Five manta rays. This is where my love with manta rays all began here on Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands. So let's get going. So we're going to assume for the sake of this series that you have already made it out to Kwajalein. But since we're starting it off here, just in case you don't know where Kwaj is, it is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, eight degrees north of the equator. You get here via Hawaii or Guam. It is close to nothing at all. You can see here on the map, but we are on Kwajalein Atoll and Kwajalein Island, the biggest island in the entire atoll. And today we are going to the main snorkel area, and this is Iman Beach. Iman meaning good in Marshallese, the good beach, and it is exactly that. So here we go. So where is Iman Beach? Iman Beach is on the northern part of the island, and this is where the bulk of permanent housing is. And Iman Beach is a huge hub of activity on the island. Lots of community events are held here. You'll see there's all kinds of you know, playground equipment. You do have a roped off and supervised uh, by lifeguards area here, uh, although that is not where we are going to be today. But if you're here with your family, you can enjoy that. And there's a bunch of pavilions as well. So this is a very popular spot on the north part of the island facing west. But since this is our first guide for Kwajalein, I'm going to kind of set the stage here for you as we look at the entire island. Generally speaking, we are going to have winds coming from the east. And it's a pretty steady breeze coming in at a good 15 to 20 miles an hour, depending on the time of year. Which means that we are not going to be snorkeling on the ocean side, which means we are going to be getting on the west side of the island here. We're kind of facing northwest here. It's not super easy to tell here on Google Maps, but the island stops here and then it is connected to Little Buster by the reef. And uh, water does flow over this area during most times of the day. At extreme low tides, however, it can be exposed. But So you're going to have the wind pushing lots of water into the lagoon from the ocean side most of the time and so that does affect a little bit of the current in this area and we'll talk about it in different snorkels as well but because it's nice and calm on the leeward side here this is where the bulk of snorkeling will happen here on quadge and while there has been various different kinds of housing that has popped up over the years this is still definitely in the main hub of the island and that's going to give us five out of five manta rays for location so as we jump into water access, there's actually two ways that we're going to discuss snorkeling the Iman Beach area here. And when I say the Iman Beach area, we're really starting at the beach and we're going north to the north point of the island. And this area is actually called North Point. And as I mentioned a moment ago, the water is going to generally be coming around this corner of the island as it flows over the reef. And so any current that you're going to have, which is really minor, but is a current and depending on the tide can be you know decent it's going to be pushing you south you can walk up to north point you can leave your shoes up there and snorkel down you can walk up barefoot go down these stairs and uh, come out this little trench here and there you want to follow this trench because it is quite shallow here and it's not going to be super beachy um, but there's a nice clear trench as you come down these stairs and then you swim out to the edge and float down is one option or you can enter from the beach and what i do typically because i'm looking for a little more exercise is i will enter in the beach area and then swim up along the drop off looking for big animals and then i'll kind of make my way back slowly with the current and just let kind of let the current slowly push me around and it's a little bit easier to get back down but again the current is typically not too much 
If you do come down the stairs at North Point, please be sure to use the handrail. They get very slippery as the tide goes down particularly. So if they're exposed, I've seen more than one person slip on these stairs. So please be really careful and mindful of this area. We don't want to get coral scrapes. That's a big, big uh, hazard here. Just in, in general, you don't want to touch the coral. You don't want to get scraped up by the coral because things get infected out here pretty easily. So please be mindful of the coral. You don't want to step on it. And so there is this nice trench at North Point to help you avoid the coral. And then down at the beach area, uh, you know, as soon as you can float, you want to do that. It's a nice, easy beach access here. Or we've got the stairway up north. That's going to give us the illustrious five, five manta, rays. manta rays. So when it comes to water traffic, you know, there's not a lot of people out here in the Marshall Islands and <laughs> Quadge does have, you know, a little over a thousand people, but even still your odds of finding a ton of people on any given day are very rare out here. And especially as you get out into the water, you might have the occasional kayaker or paddle boarder, but you're not gonna have any boats. Boats don't come that close to this part of the island and you're not gonna find many snorkelers. You might see the occasional scuba diver, but that is it. It's gonna be you and your friends. So enjoy yourself and enjoy the five out of five manta rays for water traffic. All right, now let's get to the good stuff. This is what makes this, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the best snorkel spot that I have ever been to. Just because you can see so much in the water here between these two points, between North Point and the beach at Iman Beach, Besides seeing just a million kinds of fish, you have the option and the possibility of seeing turtles, both green and hawksbilled, sharks, meaning black tips, white tips, the occasional gray reef shark. Again, those are all going to be small reef sharks that you don't have to worry about. They're going to be swimming away from you, but really cool to see. Octopus. You could see different kinds of rays. You could see stingrays you can see eagle rays and then of course my all-time favorite animal if you get really lucky you can find manta rays here manta rays are most likely going to be cruising along the drop off here and so as you swim out you'll see here on our map you want to go straight out straight west and then there's going to be a bit of a break between the main coral section where you can go in and really get close to a lot of the fish and see the different kinds of coral then you're gonna have like a sandy area with some pretty large coral heads that you can um, dive down to, you know, about 10 to 15 feet, give or take. And then there's gonna be a clear ledge that goes down to about 30 or 35 feet. Typically mantas are gonna be kind of cruising somewhere in that open space. They're not gonna be super far in, most likely. The sandy spot is gonna be where you find more of your stingrays. You also can find eagle rays there looking for, uh, you know, food in the sand or just cruising around. Turtles are probably gonna be a little bit further in, closer to the island and in amongst the coral. And the octopus, man, if you can spot the octopus, good for you. You must be a seasoned snorkeler because they are hard to find, but they are so, so cool. Now, just to give you a little hint, uh, I hear lots of people say, man, I never see as much stuff as you do when you go out. Well, here's the deal. You know, if you're looking straight down and you're staring straight down at stuff all the time, the odds of something big swimming right underneath you are not very good. So I always really appreciate the things that are below me, but then I always kind of have my head on a swivel. I'm kind of looking to my right, looking to my left, looking out in front of me, even looking behind me, because a lot of these things can swim decently fast, at least faster than we do. So just keep your eyes all around you and enjoy what's in front of you, but you know, just kind of keep glancing around and you just never know what you're going to see. One key point that I will point out on the map here that you definitely want to make it to is kind of this point here and there's an area called the Pinnacles on the lower shelf. But this is just a really beautiful spot, guaranteed to see tons and tons of fish here. And if you're snorkeling up from the south, you want to make it this far. And it'll be pretty evident, I think, when you arrive because it is just a big mound of coral and it continues down uh, along the shelf and down to the bottom area. So if you're a free diver, it's a great area for free diving as well. I will strongly urge you to go early in the morning, you know, sun up to maybe 9 a.m. I see the most stuff by far during those hours. Also, the visibility tends to be better during those hours before all of those uh, convectional currents get moving up and move everything all around in the water. But if you get out there early and you keep your head on a swivel, I'll just tell you, I went this morning and I saw three black tip sharks, two turtles, and an octopus, uh, along with just all of the regular beautiful stuff that you can see. We also do have things that are always going to be there, like giant clams and sea anemones. And so those are really fun to see as well. But you just never know what you're going to see out there. It's always a great time just looking for these awesome creatures to be cruising around. And of course, these are just the big things. I'm not even talking about all of the awesome, really small things that you can find. That's always going to be out there as well. But of course, you know that the place that 
endeared me to snorkeling forever is going to get the illustrious five out of five manta rays. So finally we come to facilities and facilities, you know, looks a little bit different out on Quadge because you don't have a car, you only have a bike to get around. So uh, up at North Point, we do have a bike rack and shower for you, you know, just a rinse off shower. Down at Iman Beach, there is a dive shack on the northern part of the beach. That's typically where I go in and where I park my bike there. There's lots of parking for bikes down at Iman Beach, but I park right there. And there is a shower area, rinse off area there as well. If you go further down the beach towards the big pavilion, behind the big pavilion, there is a proper bathroom as well. So we have really, really nice facilities. We have rinse off areas. We've got a place to dunk your gear. It's five out of five manta rays. You guys, this place is awesome. I love Iman Beach. It is the OG snorkel destination for me. Inspired this channel. You know it was gonna be five manta rays across the board. Please, please, please check this out if you make it out to this island. It is worth seeing. If you have done this snorkel, whenever it was, even if it was back in the 60s, 70s, uh, you know, Quadge has been, been hopping for many, many years with lots of visitors, please share some of your experiences down in the comments below. Uh, if you disagree with any of my ratings, please add that as well. We want everyone to make sure that they have an excellent time uh, when they visit Quadge and get out in the water and get to experience uh, everything that they possibly could. Hey, if you're out here, leave me a note. I would love to take you out as well. I love teaching people how to snorkel, even if you're not super comfortable in the water. Let's go figure it out together just so you can experience these things. I was not super confident in the water at all when I first came out here and now I am swimming here basically daily as part of my exercise. <laughs> and so I am I'm loving this area and I'd love to take people out and to share the thing that I love so much with everybody else. So please uh, share those experiences down in the comments. If you haven't uh, liked this video, do that and subscribe for sure. We're gonna be coming at you with much more Quadulant content here in the months ahead. And of course, we've got content from all over the world. So check that out as well. Thanks so much. As always, leave this place cleaner than when you found it. And we will see you next time.